done here. Here's lick of the day number four. This one is also in E and we're using the same scale, E Aeolian. So if you saw the previous day's lick, you know what I'm talking about. And this one is based on a more of a legato approach though. So I'm just gonna play through the whole thing slowly and then break it down. So, something like that. Uh, we start here on the seventh, uh, the fifth fret of the A string. It's a pretty easy shape here because we have five, seven, nine on the A string, D string, and the G string. And then we continue up to the B and the E string, and on those two strings we have seven, eight, ten. So, from the beginning, The way that I picked this is, uh, you know, you can do a few different ways. You have a lot of time, so you can actually do all upstrokes if you want to do for the initial run. But I tend to do hybrid picking. So down, um, uh, down, and the M finger, the A finger. And then I go to upstroke on the B string. And I think in this case I did an upstroke on the E string as well. But my point is that find something that feels comfortable for you. Uh, what we're trying to achieve here is that we don't get this. Where you can really hear all the string changes. So you can, uh, you can achieve that in several different ways. Just about matching the pick stroke as much as possible uh, with the legato sound. So once we get up here, we uh, sort of a roll. So we go up and then back again. And we slide down to the fifth fret and then we do another roll. So, so, and then we keep going down here. Uh, so, we're gonna have eight, five, seven on the B string and the G string. And this note, it's not part of the uh, Aeolian scale, it's part of the harmonic minor. But in this case, it sounds more like a passing note between the root 7, flat 7. So it doesn't really sound like harmonic minor, but Yngwie tend to use this pattern a lot. I've heard Vinnie Moore use it as well and several other great guitar players. So it's a good one. Uh, but I wouldn't say that you're in harmonic minor just because you have the major 7th of the key. Anyway, it makes it pretty easy to remember though, since you have the same fingering on on three strings here. And then after that, I'm sliding down to the fourth fret. Then I do another roll. Then I go down the same frets on the next string, which would be seven, five, four. Slide down again. So, to the root. And then we do another roll. And then simply go down the scale. So, So the trick here is to get the slide to sound as much as possible like the normal legato. Uh, Alright, so just a quick thing here about the placement of the left hand fingers when you do the, do the pull-offs on the way down. Uh, to actually execute a pull-off, you need the second finger down already on the fretboard, right? Because if I'm going from this note, for example, into into that, uh, when I hit the pinky here to get this note to sound, I need to put that finger down as well. And the problem is if you wait and now put it down and then do a pull off, you basically get three notes, but you have four motions. So you have one note, two notes, one extra motion, and then the third note. So a better way what I found a better way, for me at least, and for, for my students, it's worked really well, is to make sure that whatever finger that's gonna come after... Uh, the way I think about it and what has helped me a lot and also helped my students, and try it might help you as well, 
is to make sure that whatever fingers is going to come after the first finger on that string needs to come down at the same time. So in this case, I'm going to be playing four and three. So I want three and four down at the same time, literally at the same time. Because what happens then we get one, two, three, three notes, three motions. And I found that if you focus on that, the index finger tends to fall into place by itself in this case. So So try to focus on that if you find that you have trouble with the, the left hand thing here. So one thing that can really help you develop this is to practice with only hammer-ons. Uh, some great auto players simply play like this, like uh, Marshall Harrison, uh, Brett Garsid, uh, the late and amazingly great Alan Holsworth. Uh, so it's a legit technique and it sounds very good when you, when you get it down. Uh, I think the only downside might be that you can't really do it on acoustic very well. But you know, if you, if you know that you're gonna play most of electric, it can be a good thing to, to work on. And the, the, another great thing about it is that it has a very uh, strong connection with just regular alternate picking. So it's gonna be the same type of uh, movement in the left hand. It's just that we're gonna rely on getting all the, the sound from the left hand. So how do you practice that then? Well, uh, one really good exercise that I like and that's worked great for my students as well is simply to divide the left hand uh, into two finger groups and that would be uh, six different ones. We have one, two, one, three, one, four, and then we have two, three, two, four, three, four. And then simply do like a trill. Uh, and when you do this, I like to use some sort of muting device here so I don't have to focus on muting the strings. Uh, I can simply focus on the left hand. But uh, I'm just going to hold it like this for now. Um, so I'm here at the 7th fret, 1 finger per fret, per fret, and then I just go through it like this. Then you do it on all strings. And so on. Uh, and the subdivision that I like to use is triplets. So you can actually count it out like this. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and... Uh, and then you go through all the ones, uh, the combinations like that. And again, the combinations are one, two, one, three, one, four, two, three, two, four, three, four. And actually, I like to extend the exercise by going through it by starting on the lowest finger first, meaning that if I have one, two, I start on one. And each combination, then uh, after I've gone through one and a two and a three and a four, and a, we'll start on the lowest number as well. Uh, but once I'm done with three, four, for example, so I go one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, I'm gonna go back to the first combination, one, two, but start on the higher finger. So in this case, the second finger, and then go one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two. And the difference here is that you're gonna lead with the higher finger instead of the lower finger, and that feels different. So basically you do uh, the, these combinations twice on each string going up the, and do it on every string. That's a really good warm up and also technique builder. And once you've done that, that's kind of the feel you want even when you do, even when you do pull offs, right? So if I play, I'm very relaxed in my left hand and it's more, it's closer to, to the feeling of doing all hammers and really trying to pull off because I remember when I started out and I heard Steve Vai play stuff like stuff like that right and I would be like how is he able to do that because I could do it slowly and get a good tone I thought but 
I was so, uh, my hand was so, uh, you know, I used too much force. It was really hard to even consider playing much faster than, than I was. But once I started getting into this, and especially doing a lot of sort of old hammers work, it really helped my left hand technique to stay relaxed. And that's more of the, uh, that's more what you want than, than, than the opposite. So, and you'll find that it's not really about pulling off really hard, so. If I do this, even though I'm not doing, I'm doing pull-offs now, it's still very relaxed. And I don't think you can play like, you know, like that without being very relaxed in the left hand. So whenever you see someone play something, uh, especially with legato, and it looks really easy and it sounds amazing, it's probably because it is really easy for that person to play, because they're very relaxed because that's sort of one of the things that you need to make the technique work. So hopefully this makes sense. So with all that said, try to keep that in mind, have a really light touch in the left hand. And as always, uh, take this sequence and you can move it up uh, diatonically. So you just move up starting on the next scale step and do the same thing. You're gonna end up at a different place. And it might not sound as good or it might sound better, who knows. Uh, but basically if you have a seven note scale, and you learn a lick in that seven note scale, you have six uh, different versions available to you. And some will sound kind of weird, maybe, but that doesn't matter, it's good, for, good to work through them anyway. But also you might find some other ones that sound even better than the original thing. So that's the thing that I like to apply when I learn licks or sequences or whatever it might be from some other player. Uh, I learn it as it is first, but I also explore it by starting on different scale degrees and also changing scales and doing all that stuff. But that's kind of out of the scope for, for this Lick of the Day series. All right, that's it for this one. If you need tabs, you have a link in the description box below. If you need some help or you're confused about anything here, just post a question in the comment sections and I promise to get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, have fun with this one and see you tomorrow for the next lick of the day.